guy that runs Hollywood. Let's get this guy on. Yeah, I met this dude uh, about maybe 15, 20 years ago. His name's David Weintrap. He, he's got this Hollywood handbook. If you want a step-by-step guide how to get your foot in the door over in the entertainment business in the, the entertainment capital of the world, Hollywood, David Weintrap's the guy. You should go on uh, his Insta. It's at Sir David Weintrap. Let's get him on because he's all over the news at the moment, all over the Kardashians documentary. Uh, he's had quite the quite the extensive uh, list of experience, Jackie. Started off in the A&R department at Indoscope Records, then Death Row Records. It worked with Eminem, all these types. Was around during Tupac's death. He's done about a 1,000 hours at least of television for all the big, the A&E's, E, Bravo, Fox, MTV. The list goes on. Discovery, TLC. And let me just roll off some of the people he's worked with. Ray J, Mike Tyson, Spencer and Heidi, Justin Timberlake, Paris Hilton, Kim Kardashian, Harrison Ford, Eminem, Gwen Stefani, Soldier Boy, Scott Disick. I could go on forever. Ladies and gentlemen, David Weintrap. Good morning, David. Hi. Long time, brother. How are you? Long time. Good to see you, man. How are you? Man, I'm very mm-hmm. good. I've told Jackie about you years and years ago because when yep. we first met... Um, David said to me, he'd seen some of my work, early work, let me tell, the, during the junk years, I call, I call my shit back then junk, <laughs> David said to me, I've, I've got this show called The Man Show, and, um, you know, Jimmy, Fal- no, Jimmy uh, what's his name, uh, Kimmel used Jimmy to host Kimmel. that, yeah. and Jimmy yeah. had just gone on to do the big Tonight shows and all that, and David said to me, you're the guy that should host uh, The Man Show. And I That's thought right. oh, I was so overwhelmed, and uh, and I didn't never took advantage of that, and I think I've really missed the boat there. Wow, but, you know, that's a real. We, we wanted to break you into the in the U.S. entertainment business with a strong show. Kai, yeah. why would maybe we you should have bring it back. Done that? Maybe we well because you know all the girls in the bikinis like it felt like I would feel comfortable there, but. I was married at the time, and I thought, I can't be on oh, a TV show right. with all the titty girls. I felt, you know, I just thought, oh, that, that, that. anyway, that, that marriage ended. So I regret not <laughs> taking that job. It's a good time, then. we got to get you back out there. <laughs> David, now, now, listen. I saw you, I was in bed the other night with my current wife, the new wife. It's great. I've got a child and everything now. And there you were on the TV, and I said, oh, oh, babe. And she paused it and gave me that look, you know, what the wife gives you when you're interrupting their favourite show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I told a big 20-minute story about you, and then she went, yeah, yeah, can you stop talking now so she can keep what She had no interest at all. Mm-hmm. But you're, you're on this documentary. You knew what was going on with the Ray J, the Kim K, the sex tape. Yeah. What, what was going on I think I was surprised. To, like, I'm not surprised because a lot of people speculated that that was all set up and they wanted that out there for fame. Yeah. And that's what, that's what happened, right? That's true. I mean, listen, you can't have a product that's out in the marketplace that you can go and buy a DVD or watch it on pay-per-view and go and buy it and not have a deal for it. So it's an impossibility that there's no (laughs) deal or that something gets leaked. I mean, I I don't understand. I guess the world is not bright enough to understand that anything (laughs) that you go and purchase, you have to have a contract for Somebody's got to do the paperwork. Somebody's got to collect the money. You know, it just doesn't come out of thin air. If you put something on YouTube and you just left it there for whatever reason, that's leaking something. But when you can walk in a store and buy something, you know, there's a team there. And you got to (laughs) remember, that team is the greatest team of all time. I mean, I just want to say that the Ray J. Kim Kardashian Chris Jenner team is the most genius marketers of all times. They created billion dollar families, million dollar brands. You know, they we, they changed the scope of the world and we've opened up this door into pop culture like no other. I, I'm just blessed that I got to be part of the ride with Ray J and Scott Disick and my shows and it's just time to tell the story. Can you know? I ask, um, Kanye, Kanye was like, oh, don't worry. I've bought every copy of this sex tape that exists. It will <laughs> never come out. So it would that would Ray J still have his own copy? I mean, but, but okay, Kanye's version of buying a copy of something is not exactly what really happened. Um, oh. he, he, he received... You know, some some stuff that was on a drive, but that's 
stuff that everybody knew already existed. Mm. So his version of saying that is his version of it or whatever the TV show may have wanted it to be. But you have to remember, people that have been doing the business for as long as they've been doing the business, they save all their receipts because there is always going to be a moment where you may have to cash them in. And it's kind of like if you're going to keep living a narrative that everybody agreed to play their own part, but the part is not really where the world is at. It's kind of time to like pull the the sheet off and say, hey, surprise, this is what we really did to the world. <laughs> See, a lot of people speculate. Is there other stuff on the drive or other parts of the sex or other tapes in existence that we don't know about? I mean, there's content that exists. You know, uh, the content that exists is is content. And the people that know that shot the content, which are Ray and Kim, yeah. they know what they shot. And, it, you know, nobody was ever forced into doing anything. These guys were in love. They yeah. loved each other. They were partying. They saw other people going to the next mega level in the TV and branding space, music space. They just knew that there was going to be a moment that they could have the biggest marketing opportunity and kind of open up this entire world into what we call influencing today. Yeah. And that's exactly what they did. And and listen, to say it's premeditated, everybody in the world that was part of anything controversial knows that that's a marketing plan. And in a marketing plan, that is what you execute. Now, if well, you it was want executed to very story, well, David. Let, let me tell you, it fooled the whole world. Yeah, <laughs> and, and 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 you know, to date, you know how much money it's made to date. I mean, you, you have an idea. Yeah, billions, billions, not billions, billions, but but two two, you know, in the two hundred million dollar range. Yeah, I mean, and and, right. and that's one one thing. And listen, checks come in, checks get cashed. People know so. God bless them. Uh, you know, I I, I, I want to say that in, in the beginning, they you know, they weren't making money off television. Like, that tape made a lot of money. That was a big uh, priority business at, at, at a point where those checks did matter. Now, today, that's like measly little nothings that you could just go, you know, forget it. It's your gas money, your plane. But at the <laughs> same time, you know, now it's about understanding that, like, there is so many smart people out there that were part of this team that made this stuff happen. And and God bless everybody who did it. Can I ask, yeah. uh, you've worked with so many of your clients that include like Mike Tyson, you know, Justin Timberlake, Paris Hilton, Kim, Eminem, Gwen Stefani. Who out of all your clients do you think has like the best business brain, the one that excites you to actually work with? I mean, every client has their own specific you know, idea of how they run their businesses. But I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go back. I know this is going to sound crazy. And just because he's my brother and he's been with me for 17 years. But Ray J is literally one of the smartest business guys out there. This guy is the highest paid American non-scripted reality star in the entire business. Is he? he and I have orchestrated some of the biggest deals in non-scripted television for over 12 networks for the last 15 years. Wow. And then he goes and he makes a headphone company that gets valued at $250 million. And he's <laughs> always got new ideas. We have our own streaming service that we're launching called the Tronix Network. And the Tronix Network is going to be out next year. And it's all original content that he's come up with. And if that thing works, that's a multi-billion dollar business. So... You, you have to kind of be at the forefront of knowing what's popping, how to get it out there, and how to, like, make everybody want to be a part of it. And that's, that's why I say he's so smart, because beyond being a, a client, he's my friend, he's a business partner, and he always comes to me and he has a crazy idea, and we'll go and execute it, and it just works. Now, it, let's go back a bit. Fur, let's let's go back a bit further in time because it's current in the news. You worked yeah. at Death Row Records when Tupac was killed back in 1996, and yeah. just last week, an arrest was made after 30 odd years. Some Crazy. bloke has been put in handcuffs 
uh, that was in the car didn't didn't wasn't the trigger guy, but was in the car w with the killer that killed Tupac. What was things yeah, like? I, I, it must have been crazy back in those times. Yeah, what was it like okay, that day you, you knew he died? Like for, to work he, there. He died. He died on my. He got killed on my 18th birthday. Wow. 1996. Yeah. And I was a Tupac super fan. So I was at that point, I worked at Interscope Records, which was the parent company to Death Row. Wow. And then I left when I got into business school at USC. I went and I became an A&R at Death Row. So they moved me over. That was that same year, 96. It was such an incredible experience because I am a white Jewish kid from Beverly Hills who, you know, <laughs> understood yeah. the music and live the music. So then to be there working with these superstars and to be a part of it. And I had the death row chain and I had the, you know, I had the, I had this, you know, Lexus on 24s at the time. It was a very hot <laughs> car, big wheels. I was like living the life. I'm going to <laughs> USC. I'm, I got my office at death row. And then I'm there with the guys, the gangsters, the the the, the guys who ran the show, the biggest record company in the world. But it wasn't scary. It was just cool. It's the equivalent of like somebody running Drake's, you know, uh, you yeah. know, record company. And I was a kid and I was there. The thing about me is they trusted me to do stuff that a prototypical person that you would think worked at Death Row Records couldn't do. So like I could go into the bank and get stuff done very easily. I could go and deal with the artist very easily. And when Suge was in jail, here's the craziest thing. So Suge would do payroll from jail. <laughs> so they would call in. You'd have all the checks that needed to go out to the artists and the record companies and everything. And then Miss L.A., who was an artist there, she had to, um, she had the stamp. So he would call the office, we'd print the checks, and then she had the stamp to make the checks real. Well, what, I was stamp, the one stamp, that stamp, stamping, the stamping his signature. Is that what you mean? While he was locked up? Yeah, yeah because he, <laughs> she had like power of attorney. So, right. so if you have a company, you go and you like say, hey, print up these 30 checks and then I'll call in and I'll say which ones are approved because he was still running the company. Wow. So I, I did stuff that was like, you know, they, they trust me. And another thing they, they always had me do, I would always feed Suge's piranhas. So he had a piranha tank <laughs> in his office. Oh and then every God. Tuesday I was like, hey, I got to go to the pet store and go get a whole bag of goldfish and, you know, feed the piranhas. <laughs> Oh my, oh my God! Who had, oh who wants piranhas as pets? Were your Jewish <laughs> mum and dad? Were your Jewish mum and dad? Were they uh, were they worried that oh our, our wonderful little boy, he's out there with all these hoodlums, all these gangsters, or were they thrilled for your business? They, sense? I mean, they were proud. They were proud of me. I mean, I had a I was an A and R at seventeen years old at a wow. major record company. That's they impressive. Were proud That's pretty of me. good going. My, my mom, my mom wasn't scared she was like go do it i never had a problem and then you know from from death row that's how i met eminem eminem was getting signed my friend discovered him brought me in to work with it so it was kind of like a trajectory of just timing and being in the right place at the right time and then you know and then i became a talent agent yeah, you, he's the Ari Gold of uh, like this, this guy. Of he music. knows everyone. This guy. If you want a, a step by step guide, maybe you've got some talent here. You're thinking, I need to take my talent to Hollywood. Jump on David's Insta, Sir David Weintrap. Uh, we'll put the details on our website. This guy's worth knowing. He's a great guy. He's a solid. He's not a bullshitter.